Good evening, everybody. So I will introduce first the ILL as an example, and I will enlarge the scope to the other facilities in Europe. So the ILL is a, is a science facility, more specifically a neutron facility. Uh, we, got, we proposed to the, our users 38 different instruments. We will see a bit later. We received 2,000 uh, scientists per year. We got around 500 staff, and we are located in Grenoble, France, on the EPN campus. Uh, EPN campus is that the ILL, and just close to it, there is the ESF, which is an, a light source, uh, X-ray source. So the ILL was founded in 71 by France, Germany, and the United Kingdom. And since then, uh, 11 partners join in. The latest one was uh, India, who joined us last year. So what are typical case of uh, science we do? Uh, it's mostly physics and materials. But uh, since some years, soft condensed matter and biology are taking more and more importance. For the rest, it's chemistry and engineering, and it's quite stable. But what is important there is that it's very different uh, scientific community. It's not only one. We have many with different culture and different rules. Make it, make it, it is important when we talk about data policy. So in practice, how it works, how those sorts of facility work. Uh, the facility provides the, the beam. In our case, it's neutron beam, the instrument. We create, in, we design, we create the instruments. They are all specific. We provide the sample environment, so the cryopad, the magnets, and things like that. Provide support, data archiving. It's why I'm there, because the IT is in charge of the, the archiving. Also the analysis for part. We provide travel, provide more or less everything. What is provided by the users is the idea, the scientific idea, which is very important, the most important, I should say and the samples. And the samples are, are most of the time prepared by the users. So the, the workflow, uh, we start by the submission of proposals. In the case of ILL, it's twice a year. There is a round for proposals, and the scientists submit their ideas. Then they are reviewed by an external committee of experts, and more or less, uh, and they are ranked. Um, more or less 50% get accepted beam time. This is the, the rate, the current rate. Then they got the experiment. The data, uh, is, uh, the data is archived. Then the analysis could be done at the LL or at the home institute. And then the publication. And sometime after the publication, they want to refine and they come back. Uh, but what you see there is that the, the final part for the publication is more or less 25% of the submitted proposal. And what we want to do now is to seal the link between the publication and the data archiving, uh, the raw data I'm talking there. What could be interesting also is the data which have been analyzed at DLL. But it's nice to have, that's all. Why we want to do that? Uh, okay, first the directors, the top management, uh, is convinced by open data. Uh, they think it will help the collaboration. We will have more collaboration with the users. Uh, we can talk also about the quality of science, which is done. If everything is transparent, the quality should be a bit higher. And to be perfectly honest, there is also the problem of metrics like the users, like most of the institutes, we are reviewed and we got budget. And uh, one of the key elements for the re review is the bibliometrics, like, from, like for the users. And then it's, here it's very diffi difficult for us to know how much of the data has been published. So we really need to have a link between the publication and the archiving. So at DLL, uh, we store the data, the raw data, since the beginning. And immediately after the experiment, it is available online, publicly available. 
And the question was, is it really valuable? The reply is yes for the, um, the experimental team, the person who has done the experiment, but not for the others. Not for the others because there is a lack of metadata. They couldn't reuse the data in the current situation. And that's the beginning of the project. So if we want to improve, increase the value of the data, we clearly have to add to the raw data file all the necessary metadata to, to make it possible to reuse the data by scientists which were not part of the initial team. So for us, uh, this is a project ongoing. We try to collect automatically all the useful parameters from the instrument. We have to link it to the proposal system because in the proposal system you have also some information which might be interested for analyzing the, late, the data later on. And we have to define uh, what we call raw data. But if we do that, and if we continue the way we are doing it, making it available right after the experiment, we will have a problem, a big problem with our users because it means that other team could make the publication, write the publication before them. So we had to think about a data policy that will protect our users. This is something a bit different from what I have seen. Here we, we are a bit more restrictive because we want to go to open data and for going to open data, we need to protect your users. And our users are part of the chain. Without them, without the samples, we can do nothing, we are nothing. So we need to think uh, about them. Then uh, once the data properly curated, they should go into a federated data catalog. I will call about that. I will talk about that later. And then we want to link that catalog to the publication through the DOI. The other part which is of less importance for today is the standardization of the file format. But in that scope, we are not alone. There is also facilities which are doing more or less the same in Europe. Most of them are national, a bit smaller, but they exist and they produce data also. So in, uh, in 2007, we, st we started a collaboration with four of them. And the big aim is to, to provide a federated data infrastructure for neutron and synchrotron sources. I will explain why later. In 2010, we, we got the chance to, be, to have a proposal accepted under FP7. It was a small one, mainly to prepare the big one, which happened in 2011 and was also successful, which is called Pandata ODI. And Pandata ODI, the aim of Pandata ODI is to implement that federated data infrastructure. So in the partner, there is ISIS from the beginning, Diamond, uh, both are UK, uh, and the SRF, and all the others joined since then. Why neutron and, uh, and X-ray facilities? Uh, just because we have more or less the same user community. This is a snapshot of our user community in, uh, done last year, where you can see that, um, for instance, for the ILL, which is there, 4,000, one, one third of our users, we are also users of different sources different neutrons, uh, other neutron sources, sorry. And uh, more or less the same figure applies for the X-ray. It means that the community of our users are not only using DILL, but also during sometimes the same years, uh, the same year, uh, different sources because they want a different instrument. They want a different science for the same sample. Uh, this was done just by hashing the email address of our users and comparing, and then comparing them. So if we talk about Pandata, uh, currently in order to establish a federated, uh, properly curated uh, catalog, we have to go through all these steps. I won't talk too much about that. This is something very classical. I will move to the, and I would like to highlight some parts of the job that has been done. And this is the first output of the project. So the data policy. It's clear that we need a data policy. Uh, and uh, Pandata, inside Pandata, we have proposed a framework for 
for data policy for the neutron and uh, synchrotron uh, sources. So what do we say? We said that we act as custodian for the data. That all the raw data we propose should be correctly created. Metadata should be captured, captured uh, automatically uh, in order to avoid for users to have to enter them and also to have something which is quite standard. And then comes the difficult part. Access to the raw data and the metadata is restricted to the experimental, to, to the experimental team for a, minimum, a maximum of three years. It seems very long, but when you have to discuss that sort of subject with your users, you will see that it's, they have a very different view. Uh, the embargo could be extended. And, the, and we insist on this citation. Uh, if you reuse data from another team, you have to cite them and cite them properly. And we insist on the fact that we will apply a unique identifier to the data. So that was just a proposal. Uh, and since the publication of the proposal, ISIS, the UK sources, adopted it more or less like it does not been modified. And the ALL accept, uh, adopted it uh, only last year in December uh, 2011 with some modifications due to the discussion which take place with the internal scientists and the users. And there, it's a joke, but really you have to, to wear a helmet. It was really difficult. Uh, the different communities have really different views on the subject. And inside the facility, we need our users. And we have a fear that uh, if, we, if we do such a thing, um, if we release openly the data, uh, we will lose some, some users. Because all, not all the sources have adopted such data policy. So really, we, have, we had to go for discussion with the scientists. And uh, I see it as a first step. Because for the LL, it's three years, plus it could be two years, so five years uh, before releasing the data. But what is important, this is a great success for us. Because this is really the first step, and which gives us the authorization to go ahead. So on, uh, on, the authentic on the authentication, if we want to pre pre present a federated uh, access to the data, we need all the facilities participating need to identify the users the same way and to authenticate them. So it's, I won't talk too much about that. This is a central database. And we use a shibboleth for, for the, author the authentication of the users. The prototype is operational. ICAT. Michael talk about that. This is the federated data catalog we will use. So each facility will have its own, uh, its own uh, data catalog and uh, for the mechanism of web services, using one of the catalog, you can search the data through all the others. The software, um, if you want to properly curate, it, uh, curate your data, uh, you need to properly manage the data, not for the raw data, but if you want to talk about analyzed data, you need to know what was the software that was used for analyzing the data. Uh, in our community, uh, which is very large in terms of culture, in terms of differences, uh, we have some software which are really well maintained, very, really professional and some others which has been developed sometimes by only one person without documentation, without uh, code versioning. So if there is a bug at some time and you use that version, you, don't, you just don't know. The new version appears, but you don't know that there was a bug. You don't know which version you have used, things like that. So we want to foster the use of forges and things like that, versioning, licenses also, and documentation. So for doing that, we are using uh, we are creating a software catalog where we try to reference all the softwares, all the possible softwares used for analyzing our data. And to indicate to the users clearly if there is a documentation, if there is a license, to highlight that part. So this is, uh, the prototype is also operational. Uh, and the DOI, yes, because we want to identify the, the data 
quickly we went for the DOI solution and data site. So uh, ISIS, which is a bit in advance, is working with the British Library and the ILL is working with the NIST. Uh, for the ILL, the, the data policy will apply, uh, it has been published, but will apply to the round, to the proposal round that ended in February. So um, in our cycle, it means that the, the data produced starting from October will be, should be identified by the DOI. Second project is second project is CRISP. CRISP is a very large project. Um, it concerns uh, the facilities which are on the S3 roadmap. I won't talk too much about that. But in CRISP, we got also a work package dealing with data continuum and where we want also to seal the link between the data and the publication. What's interesting for today is that CERN join us. Uh, so there is uh, DAISY, ESRF, which are X-ray sources, the ILL, and the CERN. So we are going to a um, different community. So what is done, the, the work package just start, and uh, this is a job done by the CERN, but the test of the different APIs and the review of contracts. I didn't talk too much about the contract, but with the embargo period, we had some difficulties with the data site way uh, of doing things and releasing quickly the metadata also. But for in the case of EALL, it has been solved. But for CERN, it could be different. And the, oh, sorry, I forgot to talk about that. But there is a task which might be very interesting is to cooperate with the publishers to enforce the fact that the, we can, the, the citation is really, the data citation is really present in the papers. So I come to the end. So what I've tried to present there is that those facilities are working um, in the direction of open data. They are working in terms of uh, improving the professionalism uh, in the data archiving process. The access also to the data through the federation of access and there is a general movement, which is great. The help of many different organizations, but I mentioned data site and open air, is really helpful for us. Lots of, the large part of the job has already been done, which, is, which really help us. Now, for the future. Uh, said policies are necessary, but incentives are better. Really what we, have, what we have done so far is really a first step. Uh, if we don't show to our users that there is clear benefits going to open data and uh, DOI and all that things, uh, it will be a showstopper. Yeah, and something we need currently, our users are rewarded, and there is a lot of metrics on the citation, on the publication citations. You can talk about. Uh, impact factor, H index, and whatever. But all those metrics concerns, uh, concern, sorry, uh, the publication and not the data. And for, for the LL, but for all the facilities behind, something that will be very, very important is to get an API to track the impact of the data, really, of the citation of the data. And uh, watching to the Listening to the presentation today, I think it's a major concern for most of the users. It's something that should really be done. I don't know if it's done for, it's a job for data site or the publishers, um, but that's something that has to be done. And, um, I'm on time, okay. This is what will appear on the website of the ILL in October when uh, this is the test we have done with um, INIST we have tested some um, DIPIs with some DOIs, and this is something which is in preparation that will be available for the users. Okay, thank you.